Hello everyone. I hope you all are healthy and fine. In this video, we will begin chapter one, that is preparation of food and plants. So let's begin. Most of the plants that we see around us are in green color. Why they are green? Because due to the presence of chlorophyll. So let's start with the first topic that is the structure of a leaf. If we observe a leaf, there is a thick vein running through the middle of the leaf. It is called mid vein. A number of side veins emerge from the mid vein. These veins perform two different functions. One carry water and minerals and the other one carry prepared food from the green leaves and to the other parts of the plant. These veins are present on a green flat surface called leaf plate. The leaf is attached to the main stem through a stalk that is called petiole. The outer end of a leaf that is opposite the petiole is known as leaf apex. Now, if we observe this leaf under a microscope, we will see a number of tiny pores. These pores are called stomata, which help the plant to breathe. Next is functions of the leaf. Leaves are very useful for the plants. The main function is to produce food. They also exchange gases through stomata food storage, transpiration that means giving out water vapor from stomata, reproduction or vegetative propagation in some plants. Food. Next topic is photosynthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means to put together. So, Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants make their food in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight by using carbon dioxide and water. In this process, light is absorbed by chlorophyll is used to combine water and carbon dioxide which results in the formation of glucose. It is a type of sugar and also a rapid energy giving substance. After the food is prepared, oxygen and extra water is given out. Next topic is unusual plants. There are some plants in which either photosynthesis does not take place or it occurs in a different way. So, first category is molds and mushrooms. These are non-green plants which do not have chlorophyll. Hence, they cannot make their food. They get their food from decaying plants and animals. Next is cactus. Cactus plants grow in a dry place like deserts. They do not have leaves like other plants. They have a green flattened stem. It makes food for the plant and also stores water. The leaves of desert plants are modified into spines or thorns. Next is Croton and Coleus. These plants are with purple, pink or red leaves. Their red color is because of the presence of red pigment, pigment that covers the green chlorophyll. Next is Parasitic plants. These are some plants like dodder or corpse flower that cannot make their own food and use food made by the host green plant. Therefore, they are called as the parasitic plants. The last category is insectivorous plants. There are some plants which eat insects. These are called insectivorous plants like pitcher plant and venus flytrap. These plants eat insects in order to complete their requirement for minerals, which they cannot get from the soil. Next is relationship between animals and plants. Plants and animals cannot live with, without each other. They depend on each other for their survival. 
animals get oxygen from plants and plants need carbon dioxide for the process of photosynthesis this carbon dioxide is fulfilled by the animals this way plants and animals depend on each other flow of energy in living organism sun is the main source of energy on the earth plants use the sunlight along with water and carbon dioxide to make food this food that means plants are eaten by herbivores and then by carnivores this flow of energy in the form of food from one living organism to another is called as the energy flow in the food chain a food chain starts from the producer and ends with a secondary consumer last topic is balance in nature balance in nature between plants and animals is extremely important if the number of animals increases suddenly the animals would not get sufficient food similarly if suddenly the number of plants increases there would not be enough carbon dioxide for them to carry out photosynthesis therefore we must protect both plants and animals so that their number may not increase or decrease suddenly which may disturb the balance of nature so that's all for today thank you everyone and take care